Hello and welcome to our data protection get fit series. My name is Lorna Cropper. I'm a director in the Field Fisher Privacy Information and Security team and today I'm joined by colleagues Camille Ebden and Hannah Wallet. And today we're going to be discussing what you can do to keep your data protection training um, up to date and ongoing. So you can think of this as a, you know, the data protection get fit series, which we have been looking at over the last six months since the summer and how we've considered the key modules, looking at the concepts of data protection and also the different groundbreaking principles for data protection, uh, grounds for processing and the rights um, of the data subject and when they can be used, what needs to go into a privacy notice and international transfers of data. You'll be hearing later from Camille just how much is in the news at the moment about international transfers of data. And similarly, it may be that now that you understand what needs to be in the content of a privacy notice, you've been looking at um, different privacy notices that you come across online especially as we've all been doing so much more e-commerce retailing, although I'm sure most people were doing quite a bit before the pandemic too. And just as an overview of all those different modules um, we've taken you through in due course, we looked at putting data protection into practice because often it, um, you know, you can read what's in the regulation, what's in the directives, perhaps some ICO guidance, and then it's, it's quite different when you come to put that into practice and what that means to your business or you know if you're um, in private practice how that you can advise your clients for that and so we went through um, two lots like an A and a B given how much content there is and particularly you know data subject access requests there's been a lot of um, increase in the amount there and so we took you through what you do when you receive a data subject access request also looking at the data protection impact assessment dif difficulties about employee monitoring looking at um, mergers and acquisitions and due diligence and often today a lot of deals will look very closely at the data sets that they may be buying. And so it's, it's very important to know how things work in practice. Then we looked at cross-border issues. We're very much in a global world, and yet jurisdictions have geographical boundaries. But given how technology has connected us all over the world, it's very important to know the regimes for how those data flows are maintained with relation to the standard contractual clauses, binding corporate rules, the EU US privacy shield, whilst at the time it was um, applicable, as uh, you will have probably seen in the media, that has now been invalidated under the Schrems II judgment, and, but then also the one-stop shop of the GDPR, that mechanism of how decisions are made amongst the member states. And then also data protection, you know, it's, it's extremely varied and also there are things that perhaps, um, particularly with the um, NIS directive, perhaps more related to security, but as we know, data protection includes security, but then also looking at cookie compliance, direct marketing, um, the payments uh, regulation, and also, you know, still now um, a deal or no deal, but what will happen with the impact of Brexit and data protection? Of course, everyone wants to know if we'll be getting adequacy and um, we are all waiting um, for, for that news still. 
So this particular training topic will discuss about how you maintain your fitness now that you've um, managed to look at all those different aspects of data protection and also um, what what are good resources for you to start with and then how you consider learning from those. I must just apologize because I've not touched anything and yet uh, the slides keep switching back and forth. So it's very much a waterfall with the level of information and the volume that um, continues to be um, available on a day-to-day -day basis. So you've obviously um, had some introduction from our YouTube channel and now I'm going to be looking at what the learning outcomes of this session are before I hand over to Hannah. So just looking at what we'll be covering today, by the end of the session you should be able to know where you can find the resources to maintain and develop your data protection knowledge and then also understand the current hot topics in data protection and what to keep an eye on over the coming months and again just had a um, movement of the slides which um, clearly has just moved on itself so similarly just looking at the structure of the session, um, we'll look at both formal resources and informal. And then, as mentioned, just keeping on top of those changes and new developments and what the hot topics are. And then also, you know, things on that horizon and what will come up. And I think it becomes very individual then about what you choose to focus on. So I'll hand over to Hannah and um, take it away. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Lorna. So whilst this session is called New to Data Protection Training, if you have found our session and have been following our Get Data Protection Fit webinar series, then you are already on your way. Um, but we've put together some information on some resources which can assist in maintaining and developing your data protection knowledge. So first up is the EDPB. So the European Data Protection Board, previously known as the Article 29 Working Party, issues formal guidance and opinions on key areas of data protection law, such as the controller to processor distinction, as well as in relation to current topics, such as the use of location data and tracing in the context of COVID-19. All of this guidance is available to view on their website. And in addition, the agenda for the EDPB plenary sessions and press releases do also provide insight into current discussions in the data protection sphere. So next up is information provided by the EU and UK data protection regulators. So the data protection regulators do issue guidance on various topics and often these will cover their specific interpretations and views of how the GDPR should be interpreted within their own jurisdiction. But some regulators such as the ICO also allow you to subscribe to newsletters and other updates. The ICO has two newsletters which are available to sign up to. One is for staying up to date with the latest developments in data protection, and the other provides updates on the latest action the ICO has taken, um, as well as trends and concern areas that the ICO is seeking to investigate. And lastly um, is the IAPP. And this is the International Association of Privacy Professionals. And the IAPP offers formal training and certification programs, which may be of interest to to you um, if you want to develop your knowledge further in the area of data protection law and receive a certification um, of this. Being a member of the IAPP also enables you to access additional content, including webinars and conferences. However, even if you're not a member, some information like the IAPP daily dashboards are still available to you and, and these cover the top data protection news around the world and, and can be subscribed to. There are, of course, many resources out there, but these are the three we have chosen to focus on today. So 
Next up is informal know-how. So we have referenced this as informal know-how just for the sole reason that contrary to our previous slide, this is know-how from resources other than formal guidance and training. So you will have found our webinars, but we also have a Phil Fisher privacy blog, which covers key topics and hot topics from our lawyers across our international privacy network. 11KBW also provides an information law blog, which covers data protection, privacy and freedom of information and is written by specialist barristers from 11KBW. Both the blogs are available to subscribe to. In the current climate, webinars are also extremely popular at the moment, and there are a lot of great webinars being offered by law firms, bodies such as the IAPP and companies who operate in or are interested in the privacy space. So next up might seem obvious, but the news is also a great way to keep up to date with big developments in the world of data protection. Privacy has now become front page news, but this means you can always keep up to date with the latest developments in the area. Sites such as the BBC and The Guardian also have specific tech sections or technology sections to cover news which specifically relates to technology and privacy. Lastly, social media is a great way to stay up to date with what is going on in the world of data protection by connecting with or following individuals who are prevalent in this space and often share and post content. At Phil Fisher, our team will regularly share news, updates and new blogs via our personal LinkedIn pages. So do feel free to follow or connect with us. We often also run polls and surveys so you can share and hear about what the feeling is within the privacy world about changes or news such as the SREMS decision, decision and data transfers. So now moving on to keeping on top of these changes and developments. As we've covered, and I'm sure you've experienced, there is so much information out there that sometimes it's too much and you just don't really know where to start. We therefore thought we'd provide some top tips to help you navigate your way through what to focus on and how to set aside time to fit this in. Time is a precious thing and we never seem to have enough of it in our day. With the commute currently missing from our day to day lives, it can be hard to find the time to focus on training and development on top of the day job. But it is important that we set aside time. A set amount of time each day or each week blocked out in your diary to spend focusing on training and development is really important. And when the commute returns, this really is the perfect time. The next tip is to be selective. There is so much information out there, so decide how you're going to narrow it down. This may depend on the most relevant areas to you based on the sector that you work in or your role within a company. Or it may be that you want to focus on an area you don't quite understand and want to get your head around, or it could be that a particular topic has just caught your interest. Once you've found the companies or topics you want to follow, subscribe to the relevant newsletters or updates and then organise how you're going to manage this. When this arrives in your inbox, potentially put it into a folder ready for your training time that you've set aside either that day or week. And another option is to set up Google Alerts based on topics or keywords where you have a particular focus area. It can be hard, though, to know what areas to focus on. And if you're struggling, perhaps our hot topics will help you. I'll hand over to Camille now to talk you through our selected hot topics. Thank you very much, Hannah. So moving on to some hot topics in data protection to keep an eye on. So firstly, international data transfers. The GDPR sets out rules regarding the transfer of personal data from the European Economic Area, the EEA, to outside the EEA. In July, the Court of Justice of the European Union issued its judgment in the so-called Schrems II case. The effects of this judgment were to invalidate the Privacy Shield, which had been considered a valid legal mechanism to transfer personal data from the EEA to the US. But the judgment also set out that alternative appropriate safeguard mechanisms, such as the standard contractual clauses, have to be assessed on a case by case basis. Since then, the European Data Protection Board has issued draft recommendations for data transfers post TREMS 2, and the European Commission has published draft new versions of the standard contractual clauses. Meanwhile, at the time of recording this, as mentioned by Lorna earlier, 
We are eagerly waiting to hear whether the UK will be granted adequacy for data transfers from the EEA to the UK at the end of the Brexit transition period. So it's definitely fair to say that there's a lot going on on the topic of international data transfers um, and a lot changing, so it's definitely a very hot topic to keep an eye on. Moving on next to e-privacy and cookies. E-privacy rules govern the use of cookies and similar trackers. Currently, these rules are set out in the EU's privacy directive and in local member state legislation that implements this directive. However, there's plenty of discussion and debate regarding how the rules regarding cookies should be interpreted, and in particular, regarding when cookies require prior consent from users. There have been a number of relevant judgments in this area, such as the Planet 49 case and the Fashion ID case, and regulators have also released various guidelines. The e-privacy directive is going to be replaced by an e-privacy regulation. The drafting of this regulation is an ongoing activity currently, so keep your eyes out for further developments. Then we have the UK ICO's age-appropriate design code, uh, which is going to become applicable on the 2nd of September 2021. Uh, this code essentially applies to online services that are likely to be accessed by under-18s in the UK. This is, of course, a very wide scope, so many online services need to be checking whether it applies to them, and if so, preparing now to be able to demonstrate compliance by the 2nd of September 2021. The code consists of 15 standards, which cover topics including transparency, default settings, parental controls, profiling, and nudge techniques, to name a few. Then there is the European Data Protection Board's guidelines on data protection by design and default. They've adopted a final version of these guidelines. And the guidelines focus on the obligations set out in Article 25 GDPR that you should build in data protection by design to your data processing practices and also have high privacy settings by default. And this is going to be a key compliance area for many businesses. Then, of course, um, currently with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, there have been many interesting data protection developments. For a start, there are now, of course, um, many C19 apps that collect data on huge numbers of individuals regarding their health in relation to the pandemic. Employee and customer testing and monitoring has also changed and increased in the response to um, in, the, in, in the response to the need to protect individuals from the virus, and this has in turn raised privacy considerations. Certain types of technology use have also been accelerated or enhanced by the virus, from a big increase in the use of video call technology to an increase in the use of ordering apps for bars and restaurants. No doubt there'll be more developments and privacy implications to consider in the near, in the near future. And then lastly, um, data protection globally, and in particular, new data protection law. There's been a real uptick in the number of regions producing data protection legislation, notably California, Canada, New Zealand, Brazil, also South Africa, Nigeria, and Egypt. For companies processing personal data in different parts of the world, it will of course be important to keep your eyes open for new laws. And for those of you whose data processing has a UK element, there will of course be changes as the UK's Brexit transition period ends. So all in all, plenty going on, but hopefully this list should help you identify some key focus areas for your business. And now over to Lorna to conclude this session. Thank you very much both, and uh, very much whilst um, quite a whistle-stop tour of resources available and also hot topics because there are so many on the horizon, so informative, and I think just really does capture what a growth area data protection has become over the last number of years. 
and particularly as we saw with the GDPR and things are just continuously going very international and global. So now we hope by the um, end of the session and just focusing on the objectives of it, we believe you're now equipped to know where you can find the resources to maintain and develop your data protection knowledge and also understand those current hot topics in data protection and what to keep an eye on over the coming months and you know get those alerts um, ready for the new year so thank you very much for joining us today and listening to this recording and also um, our contacts are here and as as you um, are aware from this training session we are all on LinkedIn and also very um, regular contributors to our blog so thank you once again bye bye <laughs>